guys and welcome back to my channel the retro and farmhouse if you're new here I'm Jessica today's project was inspired by some things that I saw on Pinterest I like to take some vintage type items and just see how I can repurpose those so a couple of those um, items today were used for a few of our holiday projects and then the other one is kind of uh, similar to a vintage item or maybe just gives the item a vintage look so um, I will list all of the uh, supplies that you need for these projects down in the bottom of the description box below. And also, um, don't forget, if you haven't seen my previous video that I did with the collaborations with Arteza, um, there will uh, still be a coupon code that you guys can use for that. So I'll link that down below too if you guys are still interested in uh, any of the products that I use from their video. I hope today's projects inspire you guys to reuse some items that maybe you already have or repurpose some things into some really nice holiday decor that you can use for the future. So without further ado, let's get into today's project. So to start out with today's project, I'm just going to be using some of these vintage jello molds that I have. I've had these for a couple years now and I've been um, wanting to do this project for quite a while. I saw it on Pinterest a long time ago. And I just love taking some vintage items um, that can be repurposed or upcycled into another way so that I can enjoy the beauty of them during um, certain times of the year. So like for this one's going to be great for Christmas and I just really love um, repurposing it and being able to, you know, enjoy, you know, the, the look that it'll create for something else. So that's basically what we're going to start with in this super easy um, project today. So basically what I'm going to start with is I have a couple different types of jello molds. You might also be able to do this with just two different sizes. Um, I'm going to show you some ways to kind of make sure that you have some different depths in between here. Um, but what you're going to do, start out with first, is I'm basically just going to take my drill and I'm going to drill a little hole in between all of these. I'm going to use some jute twine here and basically what I want to do is I'm going to thread my pieces here so you know you can arrange these however you want so I'm going to thread from this way up and if you want to you can put some spacers in between these two parts if you want it to be a little bit taller um, I just use maybe some beads that I have or you can even maybe use some buttons, anything like that to kind of create some spacers. You're not going to see those on the inside, so it really doesn't matter if they're colored or anything like that. I went ahead and I secured a little um, jingle bell onto the bottom here, just tying that onto the bottom of each one of my bells here. And now I'm just going to add a little bit of a um, decoration with it by putting a cute little, um, a cute little bow on the top, and then we'll just create a little hanger so that way um, we can hang these wherever we want to. Okay, so for my next vintage inspired project, I'm going to be using some of this red ticking fabric again. And I have a couple of these molds left over, so I'm gonna be using these. But if you don't have um, anything like this handy or uh, you wanna just use something different, um, any type of block of wood would work. Um, and I'm also going to be using some of my leftover dowels that I have. This one, let's see, it says 5 16th inches 
um, by 36 so this was a longer one so I cut it down for some other projects and I have this one left over so I'm going to use this one and then this one's a bit thinner um, I believe this one is a 3 by 16 inch uh, and so it's much smaller so any kind of dowel or anything like that might work or um, I also thought too if you just wanted one that's regular size you could maybe just use like a number two wooden pencil as well um, that would work so anything like that um, that you can make you know some varying sizes if you would like. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try first cutting my strips um, into six inches and you can make them however wide you want to but I think you need to have them at least half an inch wide. I might even do them three-fourth inches wide but I'm gonna start with making mine six inches long um, and then I will um, do so that I can do two rows first and then I can subtract an inch as I go up. So I'll show you what I mean here. So first let's just start with our six inch strips. I'm going to do these six, six inches by three and fourth inches. So as you see here, I'm just cutting my strips and then when I apply them onto my dowel rod, I fold it in half and cut just a little slit in the middle. So that way I can run these over the middle of my dowel rod and they'll sit flat since I put that flat piece underneath. You can use any type of container piece or a little cardboard piece to use as your flat piece. That just helps keep everything um, level. And I ended up uh, drilling a little hole in this piece of wood to hold my dowel rod still while I applied these. So as you go up, obviously, like I said, you're going to want to subtract a little bit from your length. And um, even when I went up to the top, I subtracted a little bit from my width as well. So everything gets a little bit smaller as you taper up. To finish off the top, I just took a little bit of hot glue and wrapped a little bit of my material around the top part and just kind of trimmed it here and there and glued it down. So for the last step for our little rag Christmas trees, I'm going to drill some holes into the bottom of my jello molds here for my base and then I'm going to hot glue those really well. So for this next project, you may have seen this on Pinterest before, but I basically wanted to create a Christmas tree out of my leftover buttons. Some of these are vintage, and some of these, again, you can get off of uh, Amazon or at craft stores. And I started out by just making a little cone shape. If you don't want to use cardstock for this, you can just go to the regular craft store and get the little foam cones that they have. That works just as well, but I already had this on hand and it's not really going to cost me anything. So I'm just showing you a different way to do this. So I'm basically just applying my paper here until I get the shape that I want. And then I trim the bottom so that it lies flat. Next, I'm taking a piece of cardboard and I'm just tracing out around this and I'm going to cut this diameter a little bit smaller than what I'm tracing it. That way I can put that up into my cone a little bit and that'll be a sturdy base. Now, I ended up taking some leftover stuffing that you'll see here in a few minutes and putting it up into the cone just to give it a little bit more stability. Um, you may not have to do that step if your cardstock is a really good cardstock, but I just felt like I needed to do that to just create um, a better uh, hold for these buttons because after a while they do get a little bit heavy, but it's worked out really well for me. I just kind of put my piece down in there and just hot glued around the edge to make sure it 
stayed securely. So next, just because I don't want the um, green color showing on my paper here, I'm just gonna take some of my Arteza paints in the silver and gold, and I'm just gonna dab those on with just my makeup sponges here, just in case um, there's some show through underneath for when we apply our uh, buttons. And this is what it looks like after I have dabbed my paint on here and then let it dry in between. Actually looks pretty cool like this, but um, obviously I don't like my seams in the back. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm just gonna take my buttons and you can either start at the bottom or wherever. I want mine to kind of look uh, not as uniform, so I'm just gonna start in the middle and just work my way out with my buttons. But I'm gonna hot glue these on with my Gorilla Hot Glue Sticks and just see where we go from there. Now, if you have buttons that are not as decorative as these, you can do some plain buttons if you've saved a lot of those over the years and put those on there and then maybe go back with your metallic acrylic paints and just kind of do that same dabbing motion and just do a lot of different colors on there. That would be kind of cool as well. But these, um, some of these are vintage, some of them aren't. They come in these big old round packs or they used to at like Joann craft stores or whatever. And they're all different. You have a couple of them that are the same, but I never really knew what you could do with these. I guess you, you definitely could put a couple of them on clothing, um, but uh, a lot of them have lots of different patterns on there, which I really love. So um, they're definitely great for this project. They may still have uh, ones like that. If I can find some off of Amazon, I will link them below, but they come in these big packs. So um, they're really useful for doing different crafts like this and just giving it kind of like that vintage look. And here's how today's projects turned out. I've probably had these jingle bells on my little Pinterest for several years now and I'm so happy that I finally got to make these. I think these just came out adorable and I have them hanging on my little wood wreath. If you haven't seen how I make that, that video uh, will be linked at the end of this video. But these are one of my favorites. I love repurposing these. And also uh, my little Christmas trees that I made just from extra material that I had. I love how these just look very um, farmhouse, very primitive, and uh, just gives a different kind of element to my Christmas decorations. And definitely one of my favorites is this button Christmas tree. I ended up putting a little brooch at the top of it that I had that I wasn't using anymore. And I just think all of the little decorative details on this just are gorgeous. I just love how this tree came out. I'm pretty sure it's one of my uh, more favorite crafts that I've made recently.
thank you guys again so much for coming on today's journey. I cannot believe that we were up to 19,000 uh, subscribers recently. Thank you so much again from the bottom of my heart. And stay tuned for our next week's DIY. We'll see you guys then.